You're doing everything to save your business, but it just isn't working. Help! Look at me. Look at me. Calm down. All is not lost. What if I told you, you can turn it all around? I'm Kalila Reynolds, and it's time for another episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service, giving you the tools to grow your business. Well, joining me now to discuss how you can turn around your business, we have Director of Sisters Inc. JA Limited, Opal Levy. Hi, Opal. How are you? Hi, I'm great. And you? How are you doing? I'm good. We've been talking on WhatsApp for the past few months and now I actually get to interview you. So <laughs> right, <funny>. can imagine. <laughs> All right. So I'm talking to you today about something that I hope I never have to consult to you personally about. But well, I don't mind. I have to make money, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So we're looking at the issue of uh, businesses failing and how we can turn it around. So what makes a business fail? Um, Kalila, there are so many reasons. There are so many reasons. The, 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 the first one, though, that I would like to pull is low sales. Hmm? It mm. speaks for itself. But low sales comes from a number of different factors, right? Um, one thing that I find with a lot of, of companies, and, and, and I've, I've worked with a few in Jamaica, is that many times we fail to plan, Right. Right. Um, when you have a strategic plan in place, right, and you have an idea as to how much revenue you want to make for that particular year or three years or five years, what you have to do, you have to make sure that you're working with your sales representatives, you have to be understanding what is happening in the market. And then you have to, just in case that there are changes that's happening with the consumer taste, etc., then you have to see how you can pivot, Right. So it is so important for you to be in touch with your sales representatives and those persons who are facing the customers every day, every day, because they're the ones who are having the conversations and knowing exactly what the customers want. So it is so, so critical for us to have a good understanding of the demands of our customers and that impacts our sales. Right. Um, means understanding the customer, like you said, is extremely important. Uh, would you say that not understanding your customers contributes to why some businesses fail? Oh, definitely. Um, the, the, the core of every single business, Kalila, is for you to solve a problem. And the problem resides with the customer. So if you, you're in business and you are solving a problem that the customer does not have, you're going to have a problem because the mm -hmm. customer does not see it as a solution, right? So therefore, it is so important, Kalila, that when you're starting a business from the outset, you can't sit in your room with your laptop and say, oh, this is a lovely business idea. And you have to go out, you have to talk to your customers, you have to understand the problems that your customers are having and then see if the solution that you have thus crafted is a real solution for the customer or you might need to pivot or you might need to change it in some way. So that is very, very critical that you're actually solving a problem. You know, I think you hit the nail right on the head, Opal, because so many people start businesses not necessarily to solve any problem, but just because they need an income. <laughs> they, need a, they need a hustle. They need a way to earn money. And so they start this, this business. And I think hustle is a, a better word for it than, than business. I remember I was reading the Global Entrepreneurship Monitoring, GEM, an entrepreneurship report a couple of years ago, and they categorized them as businesses of necessity versus right. businesses uh, formed out of necessity, meaning the man need to create money or generate right. income versus businesses that actually serve customers. And right. the vast majority in Jamaica that were started were businesses of necessity, which probably mean, uh, explains why so many startups fail, huh? That is so true. One, one third of all businesses fail within the second year. One third. By the and second that's, year. That's a lot, yeah. And so, therefore, it, it, it is so important that everybody, if you're going to start a business, and then you can mimic another company, you know. So there are many companies that will start up and say, okay, I'm going to sell bottled water. 
So you're already in the space of someone who has identified a problem and have come up with the solution. And so you're just tapping into that. But if you're going to start from beginning, come into the market with a new product, et cetera, you have to then have a good understanding of what the customer wants and how you're going to solve that problem. All right. So if your business in tr is in trouble, how do you turn it around? Wow. <laughs> that, no, that, that, that's, a, that's a big question, Kalina. Yeah. So there are a number of things that you need to do. So if we go back to the point that we just, uh, we just made, is that you then need to go back and do some research and ascertain whether or not you're, 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 you're solving the right problem, right? Also, if your, problem, if your company is in problem, you also need to look at how are you spending, mm. all right? How important is it for you to be, um, to, be, to, to be spending on brand new equipment? Why not go to eBay or somewhere and get some second-hand equipment in order for you to be able to carry out the activities that you need to carry out? You also need to look at if you are spending monies in the wrong places or if you are using the monies from the company outside of your salary for your own personal means. And that is a significant problem that we have with small businesses where persons don't say, okay, my salary is X amount per month and that is what I take. So they keep taking monies from the company without flowing back money into the company and as such, you have a problem. That All is right? super important to note. Yes, pay yourself a salary as early as possible. Set an established amount that you should take monthly. That is so true, right? You also have you also have to look at the kind of credit that you're you're, you're using. So, say for example, you go to the bank. Um, don't just say, "Okay, I need some money," and you go to the bank and you get a loan. There are different types of loans, and a, a particular loan product based on the type of company that you have can also impact you negatively, right? So, you, it is it, whether you take an operating line versus a credit card versus a term loan. All of those are different types of structures and they operate differently. If you're going into the, um, to, if you go to the bank for financing and you, you need, say for example, you need a few months that you know you're not going to be earning revenue in the first month, few months, then you can ask, can I get a moratorium on the principal? Because they don't give moratorium on interest. So basically what that means is that for the first three or six months, whatever it is that the bank will allow, they will ask you not to pay the principal at that time, but only the interest, giving you a break eh? to plow back the money that you're getting into the business. Um, if you have a term loan that you have to be paying every single month, but your revenue does not come in every single month, right? Because you could be in construction. And so therefore you get lump sums across the year. Then you also have to look at, do I take a, lo a, a term loan or do I take an operating line? An operating line um, operates in such a way where you they give you a certain amount of money. You pull that, you pull pull it down in tranches, but you only pay back. Um, you sorry, you only pay interest on the amount that you pull down, right? And then you don't have you don't have regular payments within the year. You must be lodging back funds to the operating line, but they are not specific monthly payments. So that again is also something that you have to think about when you're actually going for a loan for the bank in order to, to get financing for your business. Mm, those are excellent points. What about marketing? Some people feel like, oh, all I need to do is just get some more marketing out there, do some Facebook ads or get some ads on the radio or television, and that will change things. And, and it won't because many times um, you have to have a good understanding, Kalila, as to who your target market is. So if you just jump on social media or you just go and do some ads without having a good understanding of what your of who your target market is, you're going to be running into problems also. So what I always recommend for our clients is that you do a strategic plan. A part of the strategic plan is for you to do a, 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 SWOT, a SWOT analysis, right? And what you do is that you match your strengths, your opportunities, your strengths with your threats, your weaknesses and your opportunities and your weaknesses and your threats. And then you come up with objectives, marketing objectives to see how it is that you're going to go into the market and how you're going to be communicating with the market, right? When, when you have identified those objectives and you've identified your target market, then you'd know exactly how it is that you're going to be communicating with your customers. Because if your customers are young people, um, within a particular age group, you have to care, be careful of what medium you're going to choose, right? 
because if you go radio, um, part, some particular radio stations don't attract the younger, um, the younger population. So again, you have to be very, very specific with who your target market is so that you're going after the right channels to get to them. Um, there's a mistake that we make with social media because many times we believe that when we go on social media, we're attacking everybody and that's not true. When you go on social, when they, the consumer goes on social media, they're looking for particular things. So mm -hmm. you might have exciting, engaging content on social media, but I'm not your target audience. I'm not going to look at it, eh? But if you are, so, so you have to make sure that the content is also specific to the person. With, um, well, the beauty of going. social media is that it allows you to, to really target that audience. So when you're, using it, when you're using it, you can check your analytics to see analytics. who's actually watching my content, engaging with my content. And then when you're buying ads on social media, it allows you to be very specific with who you want to see the ads. So that's, that's great advice, Opal. Right. So, 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 so it, yes, so it is very, very important, Kalila, that we, we spend so a lot of effort because marketing gives you the greatest return on investment. And so that is how critical marketing is. So you have to make sure that you're really looking at those P's in marketing. I mean, we talk about them all the time. And let me tell you, business is very, very important. The study of business is very important. A lot of people, oh, it's easy. I don't have to study books or read. As an entrepreneur, you have to read a lot because there are so many things changing in our environment. There are so many um, new, new, new studies coming out. So you have to keep abreast of everything that is happening in the environment to allow you to understand how it is that you're going to position your product to the right person at the right time in the right place. Great advice. Thank you so much, Opal. How can people reach you there at Sisters Inc.? Well, at Sisters Inc., you can actually email us at sistersinc1971 at gmail.com. Our um, social media handle is sistersincja and my telephone number 876-431-8823. Awesome. Thanks again, Opal. You are so welcome. Pleasure speaking with you. Here's a recap of some of Opal's key points. What would make a business fail? Low sales not being in touch with your sales representatives who are in touch with your customers, not doing research, and business owners continuously taking money from the company to meet personal needs rather than setting a consistent salary. So how do you turn it around? Look at how you're spending money and cut costs where you can. Look at the kind of credit you're using. The wrong type of loan can affect your business negatively. Do a strategic plan that entails a SWOT analysis. And no-brainer, do your research. And that's it for this episode of Money Moves JA, brought to you in partnership with Exim Bank's Business Advisory Service, giving you the tools to grow your business. If you're interested in a loan product for your own business, visit EximBankJA.com or drop me a DM. Also visit my website, KalilaRunnels.com, for a summary of this episode. You can click the link in the description box below. I'm Kalila Runnels. Until next time.